Hey, I thought I would uh, put up a little video about my current project here. Like I don't have enough projects, but I decided to build a uh, cross cart. I've been looking at these for a few years. And uh, this one is based off the plans from uh, Edge Products out of Australia. It's a uh, <clears throat> Barracuda MK2 is what the chassis is called. And I bought it with the intentions of buying the plans and then I thought I would get all the uh, brackets and stuff cut from maybe like send cut send or something like that and um, get get that done there and all that stuff. So anyways, I dive right in and get halfway into the chassis work. And I thought I would just let you know the problems I ran into, but I mean, I, they're all workable. But uh, I... For starters, everything's in metric because the Australians are metric. So I spent a weekend while we were on vacation just going through and changing, you know, all the measurements to uh, standard because to me, when I look and I, I see something that's 1,200 millimeters, I, like I like to be able to kind of roughly in my head say, all right, this bar is eight inches, you know, this bar is 26 inches, you know, this thing's about 44 inches wide. How long is it? So I want to be able to visually kind of quicker change that over in my head. And metric, I still, even after building this thing, metric stuff is still like Chinese to me. So, so that was definitely worthwhile of doing. But uh, it calls for basically um, structural tube and I didn't want to invest that much money into this, which would be like DOM or actually it's pipe, structural pipe. I ended up using um, inch and a half 095 for the bulk of it. And then one inch, either 095 or 120, I think it's one inch 120 for the smaller support bars. It calls for one inch basically 100 something on the supports and then it's like 1.33 by 100 something on the main structure so i went up i went up in tube diameter and down in size on the main structure and then the other other than being different material i felt was close enough for what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna go race the baja 1000 in this thing so it doesn't have to be spot on but um the the base frame i made out of inch and a quarter rec tube which was what did it call for? I think 1.33 again. And, and just some of the issues you run into there is just the way this thing's designed. I don't know. There's some just, just some things and you gotta kind of work around it, but it's really well thought out and designed. The way this prints are done and everything is logical and it's step by step and it's not overwhelming at all. It's just one bar at a time and take your time and get your measurements right. And uh, I don't know how much time I have in this thing. I've probably already got 20, 25 hours in it to get to this point. But I also made the, uh, here's my Barbie Jeep. I've made the two sets of the control arms. I gotta make the third. And I may, if there's any interest, make a video on how to make the jig. The, you're gonna have to make three jigs to do the control arms because there's Four different types technically, but the, the fourth type doesn't require a jig. It's just a kind of like a, a strut rod type of deal. But uh, they, they were, it's been a fun project. I like working with tube and thought I would just kind of share this. But like I said, it's a little bit of an issue with tube which I, I think i could have got the right tube if i want to spend a little bit more money but i also don't have any pipe dies i just got an inch and a quarter one inch an inch and a half dies for my bender so that creates a problem and also his plans for are for a different radius on the bends which would almost take a mandrel bender to achieve which i don't have but i was able to work around that stuff which if you've done some bending you should be able to work around that also um I was getting ready to say something. Ah, what it was was the sin cut sin deal. Back to that. I got all jazzed up because I was like, if I do the sin cut sin thing, man, it's like three days out. It'll be here. I don't have to wait on nothing. 
And I got to dollaring it all up, and it's honestly cheaper to buy your stuff from him, even with shipping, than it is to get it done through Sin Cut Sin. And again, everything he has drawn up for this thing is in metric. So, like it's like a four millimeter plate, five millimeter plate, uh, what not like that. So what we've got here, you know, is three sixteenths, quarter, etc. So basically you're gonna end up like a little thin on some components or a little thick on other components. And like I said, by the time I got into that and started adding it all up on Sin Cut Send, it was gonna be more expensive than just ordering the damn stuff. And and it's, he's he's really spot on on his prices. He's a lot of it's not even worth making. I was gonna I was gonna make the spindles and a lot of the stuff and like I said all the tabs and it just really wasn't even worth messing with it's cheaper just to buy the setup I bought the brakes um, I'm buying the rear differential I was gonna make all of that but from sin cut send it was gonna be cheaper just to buy the thing and then his stuff is kind of designed around metric bearings and all this other stuff and there's also some intricate machining in some of the hub work and some of the drive flanges for the actual um, for your wheel unit, you know out there at the axle it, it's going to use a it uses Porsche axles But it's got a drive flange at the differential and a drive flange at the spindle for the back Which either need to be machined by a very competent machinist, which I'm not or you know You're just going to snag them. So I just ended up buying that stuff I'm trying to make everything else. Uh, I've got a 1200 CC It's a ZX 1200 R engine that I got locally for somebody else that was going to build a different go-kart but got that off of not Craigslist anymore marketplace but there's the engine and said I'm waiting on differential and my shock mounts and stuff from coming from Australia still in the market on shocks I'm looking there's several different options there as far as you know as much as you want to spend so I haven't decided what I'm going to do for sure there yet, but it has been a fun project. I really enjoy the tube work side of stuff, and I, in my not-too-distant future, I plan on building a tube chassis race car and thought this would be a good warm-up for it. But just wanted to do an initial kind of a look-see here at what I got and kind of what you're going to be getting into because the, the plans are cheap enough. You just want to dive right in. Metal prices are high right now, but the way I did it, it really wasn't too bad. It was about $600 for all the tubing. And, and uh, so I, if I make another one, I've kind of got some different ideas. And he's also got a two-seater that I'm thinking about building if I build another one. But uh, see, that differential is a big thing. And I haven't figured out a way to source a differential that's on the same quality as his. His stuff, this is a competition-level buggy. I mean, his, his stuff is top-notch. So I really didn't quite grasp how serious of a buggy this thing was when I started building it and so when you get done you're going to have something this isn't just some piece of junk that's thrown together you know this will it's going to be legit but anyways like I said I wanted to just pass this on for now just to kind of show what I've been into and and just kind of send my project down the road. So if you decide you want to try this, you'll kind of have a rough idea what you're getting into. But I plan to do an update when I get a little bit farther. Maybe when I get it sitting on its wheels and tires, I can give you some more idea or more insight into what you'll be getting into. I do know one thing: the the drive flanges he's got drilled on the back for a six lug, which is basically non-existent over here. So he's actually going to re-drill those for a four lug to match the front axle flanges, which are also a four lug. So that way, if you want to carry a spare, you'll have, you know, one spare will fit the whole buggy and uh, you'll have way more access to wheel options going to the four lug over the six. So those are the, those are the biggest issues I've found so far is just getting the brackets cut and whatnot. So be pre prepared to spend a little bit of money. You're, you're going to have to make at least probably one order from Australia unless you're a hell of a machinist. And at that point, it's just going to come down to how much you value your time. So, but anyways... Have a good day.